to do what we're supposed to do but we get to come together Lord even if we're not physically in the house thank you that your presence is moving in our midst that your glory has permeated this house thank you for your glory residing in every person on the other side of this screen that are watching live and even the rebroadcast of this message thank you that your word does not come with an expiration date Thank you, Father, that you are a finisher of what you start. And for that, we give you all the praise and all the glory for what you have done, what you're doing, and what you're about to do. Amen. Listen, air five, three people, and say, greater is still coming. Greater is still coming. Greater is still coming. Come on, air five somebody else and say, God is not a lie. He's not a man that he should lie, nor the son of man that he should repent. What he said will still come to pass. This is nothing but an opportunity for God to show up and to show off once again. He is faithful. Anybody serve a God that's faithful? That just in the nick of time, he scooped you up from the enemy's hand just in the nick of time where you thought that your soul was about to fade God kept it and said remember what I promised you oh isn't he faithful like that that he could have done it before but he waited till now just so that he can use you as a commercial just so that he can show off in your life. Is there anybody that can say, look, God has done that for me too? And if God has not done that for you, point at three people and say, get ready. God's about to use you 
as a promotion, as a commercial, that even when the enemies that wanted to see your head where your feet is, them themselves will come to God for what God has done in your life. I just feel that in my spirit. Greater! I feel like running all over this house. That's not the title for the message, but I just feel the Spirit of God interrupting something. I want to run, but I got to stay right here. But if I could just prophesy this to you and say, greater, even greater is coming. All you got to do. Hold on for one second. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you used to have to push to get this. But because there is an anointing on you, all you got to do is receive what has already been released. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, no more pushing. This season is a season of release. Somebody cry out, overflow. Oh God, okay. Clap your hands. It's dangerous. Y'all dangerous. St. Luke's is dangerous. Because when you start doing this, I'm telling you, man, there's there, there is there's some juice in this house. I am absolutely elated to stand before this sacred pulpit. Behind this sacred pulpit uh, has seen so many great men and women of God. And I am so humbled and honored to be part of the number. Uh, I thank God for being able to stand before the precious people of St. Luke's. Come on, can you clap your hands for the house of God? Hallelujah. And for the late great bishop, man of God, overseer, spiritual father. God's mouthpiece for a season. Bishop J.G. McCann, I remember sitting down in his office and he said, uh, Sanchez, you know, we, don't have, we don't have members in this church. We have disciples. And uh, a leader does not birth followers. A leader births leaders. And I thank God that even when the Lord took man of God home there are still leaders here that are flowing in the anointing and through the functions of the Holy Spirit so to every leader every elder every trustee every deacon every usher every musician every person that has said yes to the Lord thank you so much for serving in excellence amen and uh, would you clap your hand for our overseer first lady Tishlin McCann I had to go back and, 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 and write out a note that I spoke almost five years ago when, when I heard Overseer say that it was exactly 10 months ago that her life turned around. The Spirit of God reminded me, and I don't want to stay here too long, but I do need to obey the voice of God, that 10 is very significant in Scripture. There's 10 commandments. There is 10 times the Lord has tested the heart of Pharaoh. It's 10 times that God tested the people of Israel through scripture. Jacob's wages were tested and changed 10 times. Daniel was tested for 10 days. There were 10 versions according to Matthew 25. There were 10 days of testing in the book of Revelation and the Lord says honor me with your 10% and I just heard the spirit of God for you woman of God to say that you have passed the test you have passed the test as I was sitting here I heard the spirit of God tell me tell her that I am proud of her and I smile over you 
and what God has promised will be released in the name of Jesus. I will shut the mouth of every person that will speak against you, thus saith the Lord. They will come in one way and will flee ten ways. Blessed are those that bless you. And cursed are those that will try to curse you. Hedge of protection over you. And you've been pregnant before. But God said you're coming into a new season now. Where I will impregnate you in the spirit realm. And you will give birth to another level of children of God. Walk and don't go back. How, I'm telling you, there's other, there's other women of God, there's other first ladies that will bounce a long time ago. But she's here not because of what she wants to do. She's here because she's tied down to a contract that the Spirit of God said. And, and God said, she will be a mouthpiece of my will. Get ready. Align yourself with your leaders because God's about to flow. Pray. God. Oh! I declare a fresh anointing over this woman of God. A new season. Residue from the past will not follow you in this new season. No residue of failure. Fresh oil in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Bless him. Greater is coming. Greater. Yes. Hallelujah. Oh. Come on, come on, the first lady, cover your overseer. Yeah. You're bursting out. Is she birth? Everybody around us about to birth. You birth, they birth. You move, they move. You elevate, they elevate. You prosper, they prosper. Stand to your feet quickly. I have an assignment to share this word with you, and I do not want to take more time than is necessary. Preachers have a tendency of adding some adobo. That y'all y'all know about adobo, eh? Y'all know about adobo. I like y'all already. Brush my teeth with adobo. Let me start. All right. I'm not here by myself. I'm here with a great man of God that he is a leadership of the men's society and he has no idea how much more the Lord is going to use him. Uh, he is uh, my brother Gabby and uh, we thank God for brother Gabriel's life. Amen. I send my love and greetings from our church, the Fountain Christian Church and from my beautiful chocolate queen wife. She... She, uh, she's so sweet, she give me diabetes every day. She, and, then, and then I almost, of course, healed. But she sends her love. My children send their love. Uh, my family sends our love. Okay, let's get done with all of that protocol. Let's get right into the word, please. Amen. Hallelujah. Luke. St. Luke. Go to Luke. Luke chapter 8, verse 40 and 42. There are some that do not know who I am. My name is Pastor Harrison Sanchez. I am your Puerto Rican brother, and there's nothing you can do about it. Amen. Amen. Greet all of those that have taken their time, eating their pancakes and their pajamas, hearing the word of God being preached. You can praise God where you are as well. It's okay. We won't, we won't talk about you. We'll praise God with you. Amen. Luke chapter 8, verse 40 and 42. Luke chapter 8, verse 40 through 42. When you have it, say amen. amen. 
The Bible reads in the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, and the people of God said once again, Amen. Amen. And it came to pass when Jesus was returned that people gladly received him, for they were all waiting for him. And behold, there came a man named Jairus, and he was a ruler of the synagogue, and he fell down at Jesus' feet and besought him that he would come into his house. For he had only one daughter, about 12 years of age, and she lay dying. And as he went, the people thronged him. We're speaking about a father here. We usually won't focus this on scripture because it's not really highlighted. It's not really focused on his fatherhood. But I want to extrapolate that revelation and apply it into our lives so that we won't just say amen as a hearer of the word, but we would be the hands and feet of the Lord as a doer of the same. I would like to speak to you today for these next couple of moments under the topic, a father's heart is. A father's heart is. Father, we ask you that you would speak expressively through the volume of this, your word, that we would not just be hearers, but doers of the same. We ask you for a fresh anointing that will come, Lord Jesus, not just to permeate the atmosphere, but to prepare the soil of our hearts so that we would receive the seed of your word. Father, I ask you, Lord God, that the word will grow deep down in us and then through us so that the fruit would be revealed. We thank you, Lord God, for what you've done, for what you're going to do. Speak to us today and bring a type of anointing that makes preaching and teaching easy, Father. Flow and break chains. Heal, set free, deliver. Confirm. Correct. In Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. As overseers said that fathers today are literally being held hostage physically, spiritually as well. They are in the endangered species list. Good fathers that can stand in the position that the Lord has called them to stand. And not just to stand, but to move in what God has called them to move. Today, we see less and less men in the sanctuary replaced with women of God that are acting as mothers and fathers. But we can never, they can never take advantage of the office. They can never flow in, of the, in the office of a father. There's many, there's less men working and worshiping in churches today. And the women have been taking their places. And I came to declare that it is time for the men of God to arise, not only in this church, but in this body of Christ. When we speak to you today, I want to give you seven quick points of what a father's heart is. And it's poured out of revelation in the book of Saint uh, of Luke chapter number 8. And I, 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 I'm not going to take too long with you today, so I want you to follow with me. Somebody say amen. Amen. When we begin to read the Bible here in the book of Luke chapter 8, the first thing that stands out to me is that there was a man that was leaving his family to look for Jesus because Jesus had the answer. The Bible says that this man had a humble heart. Somebody talk back to me and say, a father's heart is humble. A father's heart is humble. This is my first point for you today, that a father's heart is humble. If we look at scripture, we realize that, that J. Iris had a responsibility. He had a position. He had a position of prestige, in fact. The Bible says he was a ruler of the synagogue. And this was a position of respect in the community. He did not just do any old thing. He was in charge of overseeing the works and the functions of the synagogue. He was in charge of arranging worship, coming in early and leaving late. People would come and ask him for permission to do what was needed to be done. He was a man of position. Not only was he a respected man, uh, he, he was not just a ruler, uh, but he was a father. Uh, this father figure in Hebrew custom was not just a dad that would eat potato chips on a lazy boy, watching his favorite sitcom while mom is cooking and doing everything else at the same time. No, Hebrew families, uh, they were patriarchal by nature. Uh, they were patriarchal by tradition. Are you following me? Are you following me? Somebody say yes. 
Amen. He, uh, the, uh, uh, the Bible says that Beth Ab means the house of a father. Fathers were supreme in authority in the family. Fathers were supreme. They were the one that would set the rules. They were the one that would, that would have justice over the family. Uh, it was his word, and when the father's word was declared and decreed and laid down, it was not to be messed with. It was not to be fixed. What dad said went in a Hebrew traditional house. And, and this was a man that when he spoke, people listened. When he walked, people followed. When, when he looked and gave that eye, people respected. And yet J. Iris was humble enough to come to Jesus while every other man was with his nose up and his chest out, walking like they're hovering on air. He came as the ruler of a synagogue to Jesus and laid down at Jesus' feet and begin to seek him and worship him. Everyone else did not do that. And I believe that while everyone was thronging Jesus, Jesus was looking at the only one that was willing and humble enough to get down. Look at the person next to you and say, don't be so filled with your position that you forget how to worship. Don't, don't be so filled with prestige that you forget how to humble yourself. Because if there's anything that's nasty in the church today is an anointed person that stinks of pride. I can't, I can't tell you look at your neighbor because you might be sitting next to one that might have some pride on them. But just open up your mouth and say no pride in this house. No pride in this house. He knew how to get down. He knew how to lower himself. He, he knew that he could not come and have the attention of God with a proud heart. Because the Bible says that God resists the pride and he receives the humble. I was speaking to a bishop by the name of Bishop Linston Page. You probably know him in this circle. Um, a couple of, well, last year, uh, Bishop Page Sr., they, they changed the name of 10th Avenue in front of Highway Church. And, and I sat with Bishop, and, and he's so humble. You know how he pulls his ears when he starts, and he gets right into it. And I said, uh, I'm a young pastor. I've been pastoring uh, for probably six years now. You've been pastoring uh, for 148 and a half years. So please, is there anything that you can tell young pastors that we can be blessed by? And he looked at me. He placed his hands on my shoulders, and he said, young Pastor, please learn how to humble yourself up under the mighty hand of God. And in due time, the Lord will exalt you. The problem is that because we worship with impatience, we want the exaltation, but we do not want the humility. And this is the portion or the formula that the Lord is teaching us. That the world says in order for you to get up, you got to get up. But the word says in order for you to get up, you got to learn how to get down the more God uses you the humbler you should be give your neighbor a high five and say don't forget how to get down don't forget how to get down so we all struggle with pride in our hearts at times and sometimes we don't even want to realize how many blessings we are missing because we have pride blocking Jesus us from Jesus hallelujah James chapter 4 verse 6 says but he gives us more grace somebody say more, more grace. grace that is why scripture says God opposes the proud but shows favor to the humble James chapter 4 and 10 says humble yourself before the Lord and he will lift you up Proverbs 18 and 12 says before a downfall the heart the heart is haughty but humility comes before honor so if there is pride Pride has no room for God. It's quiet here. I know y'all don't like this type of preaching, but somebody talk back to me and say amen. amen. Love is not proud. And here is the application because we at times have a tendency of being so full of ourselves. The Spanish people call it machismo. Somebody say that back to me, machismo. Machismo. They say that, you know what, I don't need your help. I got this. I got this. And, and, and the thing is that you can only get this but so far, but how much are you missing because you are your own God? I preached a couple, uh, well, every year, a couple times a year, I go down to San Francisco to preach. And in San Francisco, they have a church of Satan. 
literally a church of Satan. You'll see the statue there with a goat head, little kids lifting up their hands. It's, it's ridiculous. Matter of fact, uh, we have to come against that because I heard that there's something happening in Washington, D.C. even right now. Church of Satan coming up against the people of God and saying that they said so the, the, the idea of this is that they are their own God. They're not evil in, in their website. But they say to you so that you can join is that you can worship you because it's only you that you need. Love you and forget about everybody else. There's no God. Matter of fact, there is a God and you are the God. And that's how Lucifer became Lucifer. Looking to himself. Mm, 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 mm. So once we have this pride, we have our own strength, our own aggression, our own self-reliance. We become dominant of our own selves and we exaggerate everything and we begin to compete just so that we can feel better about ourselves. And you see that behind pulpits today. How better can I preach than the person that's going to preach after me? Because if I pray and you fall down, that means I'm better than somebody else. The devil is a liar because the law can use you, sit you down and bring the last and bring them to the front real quick fast and in a hurry learn how to humble yourself a father's heart is a humble heart here's point number two a father's heart is a selfish a, a selfless sacrificial heart uh, a father's heart is a selfless sacrificial heart they're willing to sacrifice for their children a father's heart is willing to sacrifice for their children. He was not pushing through the crowds for himself. He was pushing through the crowds for his daughter. A crowd of people that separated him from Jesus. He, he had to push through all of that to make it to God. Fathers are willing to push through things for their next generation. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's not about you. It's about what you're pregnant with. It's about your legacy. And in order for you to see the legacy come through you, you have to be willing to push through some things. The anointing will never be given to anybody that's not willing to push through, to make it happen, to stand before and say, I need to cut through some things. Matter of fact, the Bible says that Jairus lived in a certain city called Capernaum. And Capernaum literally means, literally means a, a village of comfort. The Bible says that he came out of this village of comfort, excuse me. He came out of the village of comfort to seek Jesus. And how, how many times have God has done this in our lives? That he will call you out of your comfort zone to see the glory of God. We will never see the totality of God's glory in comfortable settings. Because God never promised us to have comfort he's promised us to have peace and peace is greater appreciated in the midst of problematic atmospheres it is moments like that that God begins to show his glory many times we run away from problems and we wonder why we don't see the promise because it is in problems that gives birth to the promise of God we will appreciate God as a healer when we are sick and sometimes, I'm not saying all the time, but sometimes God says, I love you enough and I trust you enough to bring you through certain things so that you can see my glory. Is there anybody in this house that has been through some dark times and they saw the glory of God? See, look at your neighbor, say, neighbor, my best worship was in hardships. My best praise was in dark moments. And God is saying the first step to see the manifestation is your willingness to obey. I preached the other day that in order for us to see the manifestation of the Lord, there is a formula here that we have to have the right word from God. We have to have the right timing of God. And we have to have the willingness to obey. And many of us have the right word, but we miss our time. Many of us have the right word, we have the right timing, but we miss it because we are not willing to obey. Can I say this to you? Praise is not enough. Don't crucify me on this cross that I almost knocked down here. Praise is not enough. Worship is not enough. Yeah. Your, your, your sacrifice is, is, is not enough. Good music, oh, oh my respect, is not enough. Good church is not enough. Stomping. 
I'm still trying to learn it. I, I'm, I'm going to get it. It's not enough because you can stomp well. You can sing well. You can preach well and still be disobedient. God is saying, I'm not looking or receiving what comes out of here. I'm receiving what's coming out of here. God is saying, I'm checking your heart. And a father's heart is a heart that is willing to sacrifice. Now, your neighbor and say, you're pregnant with greatness. You're pregnant with greatness. And sacrifice comes with the package. I know that there's fear, but you don't have to be ruled by fear. There is going to be fear in our lives, but I did not give you the spirit of fear. There's so many men and women of God that are dying pregnant, but the goal is not to be pregnant in the spirit. The goal is to release what God has given you. And I declare over this church that we're walking into a new season where we are going to see out of us what the Lord has placed inside of us. Somebody open up your mouth and bless the Lord in this house. He had to push through it. He had to push through it. And a father will, will be willing to push through the crowds of uncertainty and of fear. Hallelujah. He came through the uncomfortable situation to see the glory of God. And see what God was willing to do. Hallelujah. There, there is an expectation that God is placing over this house. There is an expectation that God is placing on you. Point your neighbor, put your point to your neighbor and say, God is expecting something out of you. Uh, don't, don't, don't get too comfortable. Don't, don't, don't let money get you too comfortable. Because if the enemy can't curse you with a curse, he'll curse you with a counterfeit blessing. Some of us are anointed, but we are immobile. I'm going to let that cook in your spirit. Because we are so comfortable that we are expecting somebody else to do it. I want, I want, to, I want to have the anointing conveniently. But this anointing comes sacrificially. A father's heart sacrifices. Oh, oh, my I looked at an old album. My father was born right here in Harlem in 1944 on 109th Street. His home church was 109th Street that moved to 125th Street, the Spanish Pentecostal church, La Sinagoga. We were all raised there, Bishop, Bishop Abelardo Berrio. And, 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 and he, he used to dress real sharp. My father was real dark skinned. He had a little mustache looking all shaven, a little split right here. He was smooth. He was a smooth dude. And I was looking at a picture, and I said, man, Dad, you were sharp. Look at that tie. Look at those cufflinks. Look at that pinstripe suit. Look, look, at those, look at those wingtip shoes. And then I looked at what he was wearing, and I said, what happened, man? And my father said, oh, you got jokes. He said, you know what happened? You happened. Your mom gave birth to you and all my soup money and all my haircuts and all my cufflick money was for your diapers and for your milk. See, I look the way I do because I want you to look better than me. Look at your neighbor and say, a father's heart is sacrificial. I don't want my, I don't want to be better than my son. My son's not supposed to be worse than me. I, my son should go farther than me. My son should be sharper than I am. My son should, should be more anointed than I am because of what I took off of me to place on him every feeling that my son has is an empty space that I have came from me came from me why, why, why some of the fathers here today will take the blessings and consume it and have their children look like 15 miles of broken road it's not supposed to be like that air five your neighbor and said I'm pouring out to my next generation I'm pouring out to my children my children will go further than I am don't get comfortable with that See, I'm making some certain sacrifices let me give you point number three so that we can continue here point number three is a father's heart is prophetic a father's heart is prophetic. Can I talk to you like this? Is this okay? Is this all right? The, a father's heart is prophetic. Hallelujah. When I first became a father, this was eight years ago, uh, I looked at my children and I was humbled by, by what my wife and I, by the grace of God, produced. I saw my children as they came into this world for the first time and I looked at them as a blank check and I said, I can write whatever I want on this. They can go so much further than I can ever possibly dream of. And I can remember God to impress this question in my heart when I put my finger out to my one-hour-old daughter. And she reached out and held my hand. And the Spirit of God, remember, I remember like yesterday, 
He said to me, what do you see? As I was looking at my child. And then he said, can you see it? I heard the spirit of God while she was holding my, my finger. And I'm holding back my tears. No, nope. I ain't going to cry. There's a nurse here looking at me. She might charge me for that too. That tear is $10,000. <laughs> and I believe that question the Lord gave to J. Iris while his daughter was laid dying there, looked at her and said, can you see it? He looked at her dying daughter and everyone else around her saw death. But Jairus saw something else. Because Jairus, just like every Hebrew name, has a significance. Jairus literally means God enlightens. Are you here? Those are, are watching right now on the other side of that screen. Uh, God says, Jairus, you mean that I will give you light. I am illuminating you. In other words, a father's heart is able to see what others don't see. If God has called you to be a mentor, if God has called you to be a spiritual father, and that matter, a spiritual mother, you should always see further than what everybody else sees. Because God says, I'm giving you an eye that you can see in the spirit. Are you still here today, church? He said, so while everyone sees your daughter sick, I want you to see your daughter whole. Mm -hmm. While everybody sees your daughter die, I want you to see your daughter living because I want you to speak out what you see. Look at your neighbor said, if you see it, you got to say it. If you see it, you got to say it. If you don't let it die after you see it, you got to open up your mouth and say so. The re let the redeemed of the Lord say so. If I see what they cannot see, I can get what they cannot get. Open up your mouth, somebody, and say what God has declared over your life yeah there is a prophetic mantle over every person in this house that is daring enough to declare what God has opened up their eye see see this is where the enemy comes in to try to negate because he can't do anything about what God showed you but he will try to manipulate it from coming out of your mouth the way it came into your eyes because every time God shows you something, the enemy slips in with his smooth self and say, you can't do that. Look at your credit score. You can't do that. You ain't even graduate high school. You can't do that. Look at the color of your skin. You can't do that. You are Puerto Rican in a white man's world. You can't do that. You black. You white. You. God is saying, if I showed it to you, it's because it's already yours in the spirit. I'm daring you not to see it. That's the easy part. I'm daring you to walk in it, to talk in it to prophesy over it because the power does not come when you see it the power comes when you say it are you here today church hallelujah to the lamb of god our children's future is in your mouth i'm gonna say that again our children's next blessing is in your mouth glory to god our children's next breakthrough is in your mind. There's, there's children tomorrow waiting for what you will say today. Are you here today, church? I had a conversation with Brother Gabe, came in down over here, coming down over here this morning, and I said, you know what, there's two types of people. There's people that will take from their today, uh, that there's people that will take from their tomorrow to satisfy their today. And there's people that will take from there today to satisfy their, their tomorrow. And people that take from there today to satisfy tomorrow will always look foolish today, but will be wise later on. You might not see it today, but it's coming. Look at your neighbor and say, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. Power comes when you are patient enough to wait. It's coming, it's coming. Can you prophesy that to your neighbor and say, it's coming, it's coming. What God says, it's, it's coming, it's coming. I see it and I will declare it. Here's point number four so that we could continue here. A father's heart is decisive. A father's heart is decisive. God doesn't show you things just to show it to you. And just so that you can speak it, God shows it to you so that you can be responsible enough to handle it well. There's many of us that wait for a revival, but God won't give us a revival because we are spiritually irresponsible. Hmm. I, I, I wish I had time here today because God says, I've given you a seed and you mishandle the seed, but you're asking for fruit and you're wondering why I didn't give you that yet. We're asking God for a million dollars, but your in income tax came 
and it was 2000 and you wasted it on two shoes and a new hairdo. How much that bag cost? $1,999. Oh, my God. God. God is saying, God is saying, can I trust you? I know you trust me, but, but, but can I trust you? Because you have to make right decisions. It's not about speaking in tongues and casting out demons. Because I see many people speak in tongues and cast out demons and fill the capacity arenas but can't pay their rent on time. God is saying, God is saying, are you not just spiritual, are you responsible? Are, are you responsible? I, I, I'm not getting no amens there. I, I, know, I, know, I know this is one of those words. That they, but a father's heart is responsible enough. A father's heart is a, is a heart that makes decisions because, because God says, I can trust you now. Jairus saw his daughter healed and did not stay there crying. He got up and looked for Jesus. Look at your neighbor and say, God blesses those that get up and make a decision and not just come to church and say, one day the law is going to use me. You, you, you shout over that one day. You cut rugs over that one day. You run around seven times over that one day. But one day should turn to day one. Look at your neighbor and say, it's today. It's not one day. It has to be day one. Look at your neighbor and say, what God told you to do, do it. I know it's not deep. It's not, it's not, it's not revelational. It's not theological. But let me say that one more time. Point your finger at the person next to you and say, whatever God told you to do. Stop praying about it. Get up and do it. There's a decision that you got to make that you'll never have peace until you start. God's not telling you to do everything. God is just telling you to get up. If you make one move, I'll make it happen. God's about to show off, but he's waiting for you to show up first. Look at your neighbor and say, be decisive, be decisive, because we are anointed, but we can't be a double-minded man because we could be unstable in all of our ways. And Jairus left his wife, left his daughter, and he looked for Jesus. See, see, if my daughter was dying, I don't care who calls me, I'm going to be there with him. It takes a man of faith to say, baby, I know you're dying, but I got to go and get something for you. Because it don't matter how much I cry with you, crying is not going to fix this. I wish I had time today because some of, some of us think that this is worship. <laughs> Lord, please, Lord, please, you know. You know, Lord God, please, these people be by. Lord, please, in the name of Jesus, let her die. Just, just run her over, Lord, run her over by truck. Lord, please, Lord God. God, God. God does not change people. He changes you. Can I say that one more time? God does not change people. He said, I've called you to be an atmosphere changer. He's waiting on you to get up and make a decision and be an example and take the first step. It takes more faith to say yes to God than to just sit there and worship God and say, thank you, Jesus. Yeah, it's quiet here today. It's quiet here today. Number five, number five. I'm flowing here. I'm flowing here. I'm going to come to a close. Number five is a father's heart is patient. Uh-huh. Because he finally got Jesus, and then all of a sudden, Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. Take out the cheese and crackers. You know, you Puerto Rican, when, when visitors come to your house and you take out the cheese and crackers and the guava, yeah, that's what we do. I can imagine J.R. is taking his iPhone and FaceTiming his wife and saying, I got him. He's coming. Get ready because Jesus is right here. And she said, I don't see Jesus. Turns around, and Jesus detoured and began to heal somebody else. Now, there's another lady that came that had, a, 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 that had a, an issue of blood for 12 years, okay? Listen to how unfair this is. A woman that was dealing with a problem for 12 years detours Jesus from going to a girl's house that was alive as long as she's been dealing with the issue. There's a revelation here because while the girl was born, that was the same year that the woman had the issue of blood. Her, her, her 12 year sickness and the 12 year old girls represents two generations. 
And Jesus says, I need for you to have patience because while you're waiting for God to place his hands on today's generation, he says, pause right there because if I don't fix yesterday's generation, it's going to bleed into today's generation. So while today's generation is saying, Lord, what about me? My mother's been alive as long as forever. My father's been alive as long as forever. God is saying, if I don't fix yesterday, yesterday will duplicate itself into today. So before I fix the fruit, I got to fix the root. Somebody talk back to me. In this house, I feel anointing in this place. Get ready, generation. Get ready, those that have silver hair. Get ready, those that are walking and they feel everything cracking. Get ready because God is saying, there's a fresh anointing coming to old school. There's a machete. There's a, there's a fresh anointing coming on yesterday. God is saying, don't feel that you're too old for this don't feel that your time has has been over god is getting ready to heal all of the mothers and all of the fathers that are standing up here today everybody anybody that's over 45 anybody that's over 65 lift up your hands right now and say i receive what god is about to do it's not just about what God is doing in generating this generation. God is saying, I'm fixing what has been bleeding out of mothers and fathers. I'm fixing bleeding vision over mothers and fathers. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because God is speaking here in my spirit. And he's saying that there's a lot of old generation that have old school souls and old school anointing, but they're bleeding out. And because we're bleeding out, we're losing passion. And we got revelation, but we just don't know how to release it. And that's why we have old school people so frustrated with the new school generation. And old school, the only way that they speak over us is correcting us or belittling us or getting frustrated because they're different. And God is saying, I'm giving back patience. Because what I started in the old generation is going to flow in the new generation. Look at your neighbor and say, Father's heart is patient. He's patient. He's patient. A father's heart, number six, is faithful. Is faithful. Because when Jesus finally says, I'm coming to your house, we're getting ready to close now. I'm coming to your house. Right when everything else was taken care of and Jesus went to his house, another interruption came. The Bible says a servant of the house came and said, don't bother, don't bother the, the master any longer. Uh, here's the bad news. Your daughter that was sick is now dead. Uh, and there's always going to be bad news when Jesus is on his way. There's always going to be bad news when your breakthrough is right around the corner. It always gets ugly before beauty comes. And matter of fact, that's confirmation that breakthrough is about to come because, because it always gets crazy before the anointing begins to release itself. Look at your neighbor and say, stay focused, stay focused, stay focused. And last but not least, my brothers and sisters, is that a father's heart feeds. A father's heart feeds. I read this scripture so many times and I missed this. It's not what the miracle did that caught my attention in this perspective of the scripture. Because the Bible says after he said, Talita kumi, little girl, arise. The Bible says that immediately she arose. And Jesus now says after the miracle comes now the instruction. Why? Because he does not want you to get so focused on the miracle that you miss the miracle worker. I don't want you to get so hyped up on revival that you look for a fix only once a year, that your breakthrough only comes when bishop comes to the city. And when the bishop leaves the city, everything unravels back to its old pattern. Your breakthrough does not come out of blessings or out of the miracles or out of the gifts. It comes from the source of all of that that I just finished saying. So Jesus begins to give us a principle here. And Jesus says, listen, I did the miracle. That's something that only I'm able to do. Now that she's alive, feed her. That's something that you have to do. Theologians say that Jesus said feed her because maybe they, have, they come to a, a hypothesis that, that the reason why she died in the first place was because she did not eat well. 
She, she probably died because she was being malnutritioned. And there's a lot of churches that have everything beautiful, but the word is not feeding us. Ah, oh, I wish I had time in, in this house. What good, what good is, is awesome ministry? What good is, is, is melodic music? What, what, what good is amazing ushers? What, what good is dynamic deacons? What, what good is electrifying elders? What, what good is, is, is lights, camera, and action? What good is live sound? What good is excellence in the church if I'm not being fed properly? Lord, take me out of the mega church if you need to. Bring me to the storefront as long as there is your spirit I'm the word hallelujah open up your mouth and say I need word he said he said I'll do the miracle but after the miracle feed yourself notice that he did not say I'll feed her notice he said you feed her what 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 did Jesus say to Peter after he resurrected, sat down fishing with him. And he said, you love me? I love you. Feed my sheep. You love me? I love you. Feed my sheep. I love you. You love me? Feed my sheep. Because, because if I do the miracle and you don't feed her, then you're constantly coming back through a vicious circle where revival comes and then you die. And revival comes and then you die. But God is saying, after I gave you the revival, revival should no longer be needed because you're being fed by it. I rather would grow slowly than to be a firecracker that lights up the night but stays in darkness for the rest of my life scratch the fireworks let me be a little flame jesus said this little light of mine i want you to let it shine keep feeding the flame keep feeding your spirit whatever you want to grow you got to feed right whatever you want to live you got to feed right the way you feed it well the way the way you will see faith grow somebody stand to your feet i got to close here i feel the spirit of god moving in this house in this house in a special way but god says fathers feed father's feet and I must I must confess that I've been preaching for a while but I sense that the spirit of God is taking me now to a next level because there's certain intimidations at times that you feel pouring into someone that is twice as old as you but God is saying listen I am placing my favor over fathers today Come on, lift up your hands as I declare this over your life. I, 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 I'm placing favor, and I hear the Spirit of God say, over spiritual fathers, hallelujah, over spiritual mothers, because the enemy says, look, you're empty, you're, you're empty. God says, no, you're not empty. You just have space for me to fill now. God is shifting things. Because God is looking for those that are spacious enough for him to fill. Because God says, I want you now to pour over somebody else. Spiritual fathers that are in the house. Spiritual mothers that are in the house. God is commanding you now to begin to feed. To begin to pour out. To begin to mentor. Not for your own attention, but for the glory of God. Because what you feed begins to grow. You can teach what you know, but you will ultimately impart who you are. So make sure that before you pour out to somebody else, ask the Spirit of God, pour into me. Because I don't want to intoxicate somebody else. I don't want to be blind leading the blind. I don't want to have bitter pastors speak bitter words over bitter churches so that we can have bitter disciples but look at your neighbor and say wash yourself hallelujah wash yourself the spirit of god is an emptier before he fills you god right now is saying wash I'm about to wash you from all of the hurt. I'm washing you from all of the unforgiveness because you can be a spiritual father. You can be a spiritual mother if you still have bitterness and you still have unforgiveness. You can pour out something that you don't have and the Spirit of God is saying, I'm opening up the lid and don't let the enemy make you convinced that you are empty. God is saying, I'm just pouring you out. I'm just pouring. That's why we worship before we have word because if word is a filler, worship is the emptier God is saying would you empty yourself 
Would you empty yourself? Because I'm about to fill you up. So a father's heart is a humble heart, is a selfless heart, is a prophetic heart, is a decisive heart, a patient heart, a faithful heart, and a feeding heart. Spirit of the living God, I spoke your word the way you told me to speak it. I decrease so that you can increase. We don't need theatrics for breakthrough. I just need you right now, Lord God, to let the seed stick in the spirit of these, your children, so that when we go back home, we can see it come to pass. Let an overflow come. Hallelujah. Fill us until we need no more. I thank you in Jesus' name. Quickly keep your head bowed. If there's somebody here today or those that are watching today that needs to repent today and, and give their life over to Jesus, God is calling you. He's calling you by name. And it's not a coincidence that you came across this social media page. God says before you continue surfing, stop right there and listen to the call of the word of God he doesn't care about what happened or what you did or who did what to you God says I want to come not only into your mind but into your heart the Bible says repent and you shall be saved and if that's you today or if that's you today here my beloved precious people of God would you quickly repeat this prayer with me and I'm gonna ask all of St. Luke's family to repeat this prayer with me say Lord God I come before you I recognize that I am a sinner and I need your grace. I repent of my sins. Come into my life. I believe that you sent your son. He died on the cross. He shed his blood to wash my sins. I receive you now as my personal savior. I give you my pain. I give you my hurt. And I lay it down at your feet. I accept you as my personal savior and I declare that I don't belong to the world I belong to Jesus and from this moment on I declare that I am a Christian come on St. Luke's celebrate Jesus and for my brothers and sisters and my friends that are there where you are come on and celebrate Jesus God loved you enough to reach out to you Ma'am, sir, hallelujah. Oh, Before we close, I just have an urgency in my heart for those that are watching. If you did repeat that prayer with all of your heart, wherever you are, Today is today, but you might come across this next year. It don't matter. I want you, if there is no information on that screen, I want you to like it, subscribe it, comment to us, and we will reach out to you somehow, some way. If you across the street, we got you. If you need a mask, we got you. If you black, white, Puerto Rican, or mixed, or I don't care what you are, we got you. Jesus is not black. He's not Puerto Rican. Jesus is for the whole world. And if that's you, if you're in the Harlem area, come on. I want to see you. God bless you. We love you. Go in peace. May God be with you. Somebody give God some praise in Jesus' name. Be blessed.